May we have your attention, please? Britain's railway has historically been very rules driven. Decisions are made by applying the right rules to a situation as it presents itself. But we couldn't and don't have a rule for absolutely every occasion. Sometimes we'll even find that in novel situations there are two rules and they may conflict. Strictly speaking, you may have to refer to a higher, higher authority for a resolution, to your manager or even their manager, and that could take time. Meanwhile, there's a train stopped somewhere unable to move. There might be upwards of 500 people on board, all wanting to get home or get to work. And there's another service three minutes behind that one, and another one three minutes behind that, that are both routed through the same section. If there's no one readily available to make that decision, what do you do? Well, before now, the answer would probably most likely have been to wait. Delay minutes would start to stack up, performance levels fall, and customer irritation start to soar. But now, there may be another solution. One that hands decision-making down to the front line, to those who are facing the situation in real time. It's called the GeForce tool. To talk more about the tool and how it's been used in practice, I'm joined today by Patrick Allinson, Operations Control Manager for Great Western Railway. GWR has been involved in trials for the tool for 12 months from within the control center. Patrick, welcome to the RSSB podcast. Could I ask you to introduce yourself and tell us how you came to your current role in the railway? My name is Patrick Allinson. I'm the Operations Control Manager for Great Western Railway, as you say. I've been doing this job now for Two years prior to that, I was working within the control centre doing a variety of roles, including a train service controller, duty control manager. And then prior to that, I was a, a conductor on board. So I guess I've seen the sort of decision-making process that you've touched on from both sides, as it were, and I've also travelled on, on board trains uh, you know, before I joined the industry as well. So I think I've got a pretty good uh, understanding on both sides of the decision-making spectrum, as, as you put it. Right. Thank you again for that and welcome. As I mentioned in my introduction, we have a rule for almost every situation, but not every situation. Would you give our listeners, and indeed me, some background context to how train controllers have, at least up until now, managed decision making? Yeah, so as you say, lots of what we do on the railway is, is based on rules, and that's a partly a historical thing. It's a safety thing. It's also a thing where we base that on experience. So when something happens, quite often that will be inserted into the rule book in a rule form. As you touched on in your intro, that there aren't rules that cover every single scenario, but there are quite a lot of rules that cover many scenarios. So we use the, the industry rule book, which gives us guidance on what to do. So, for example, a train may have a defect on board. So we have some guidance on what we can do and what we can't do, how far we can move the train and what mitigations we might need to put in place to make sure it's done in the safest way possible. There are a number of, of rules there. There's also rules within each train operating company. So they have their own standards to adhere to. So each company will have a level of those. So there are lots of rules out there. And obviously, when you're taking decisions, you want to make sure you're making the safest decision possible. So you do reference the rules. But I think Partly what GeForce does, and we'll talk about this a bit later on, is give you a little bit of uh, empowerment and backup to when those rules don't, don't always exist. Thank you, Patrick. That's certainly told me a lot I didn't know until now. We're talking today about a tool that could disrupt those decision-making processes. Who do you think should be using the GeForce tool? The GeForce tool can, in theory, be used by anyone. Initially, when this was rolled out by RSSB, various different people were in, involved in the trial. So that, that could have been uh, like my involvement was from a control perspective, but also on-call managers have been involved. And on the network rail side, uh, I know signalers have been involved, various other parts of the industry. I think the key thing with this tool is though that we're, we're looking at it from uh, the point that the control center is, is looking after the whole network. And they're often the point of contact when something does go wrong. So they are in a good position to be able to use this tool. In the future, there's talk about this process being used by frontline crews. That's still in, in its early days. Obviously, we have to be careful. We have to make sure that everybody is still being consistent and doing things safely. For me, I think this is it's a really key that the people using this tool are the people making those decisions. And generally, when we talk about decision making on the rail, we are talking about control centers, whether that be network rail or talk control centers. So there's lots of opportunity for this to be used, but at the moment, it's, it's mainly being used, uh, as I say, at the decision-making stage within the control center. 
Okay, so that's answered the who question. Could you expand on the when and how questions? Can you give us some examples of when and how it would be used? What type of situations and what are the likely decisions that might come from it? The key thing with GeForce is the first part of the acronym is go, no, go. So it's really important to say initially that we're clear on when we don't use the tool. Um, so this isn't a sort of blanket or we can use that in any situation. So we shouldn't use the tool uh, when there's an emergency and we need to act immediately or that when break it, when there's a clear rule instructional procedure in place already that tells us what to do and can be applied, we should be using that rule and not GeForce. So it's really important to just sort of make that point initially. So as you said, when might we actually need to use this tool? So uh, an example of a few occasions, so no rule covers the situation that you're in. As you said before, there isn't a rule for everything and we often find that something happens out of the ordinary and there isn't a rule that covers it. Doing nothing is a decision in itself and often it can create an important more risk. It's important that we do use it when there's no rule that covers the situation. Another occasion might be, and I think you touched on it at the start as well, where you need to contact somebody for permission to act, um, but you're not able to get hold of them. Obviously, again, delaying a situation can, can often make things worse or making no decision can make things worse. So that gives people who are trying to get hold of that person a little bit of empowerment to use GeForce in that scenario. Another occasion maybe where, where more than one rule could be applied, they conflict with each other. You know, where we have a company standard that maybe in one part says one thing and another says another, or where it clashes with, you know, maybe some industry guidelines or the rule book. So where there's a bit of confusion there and they can conflict with each other, that's where it's, it's a useful tool to use. And then finally, and this is probably where you'll find it used most, is that there's something unusual about the situation you're in and it means you can't apply it or if you did it would lead to a bad outcome so that's where we find that you know it's, it's an unusual scenario so you, know, you talked a little bit about times when we have used it so we've been using this for nearly a year now and what we've found is as i said before generally it's where there's a couple of rules that are clashing or whether there's no rule in that scenario we had a situation where there was a defective piece of on-train equipment um, which is a, a vigilance device that, that goes off to make sure the driver's still sort of awake so one of the mitigations we, we use for this is to put the guard on the train in the front cab with the driver. We don't do that very often, but on this, this, this is a mitigation that's recognized within the rule book. Within our, our company standard, there was a bit of a, a contradiction on where the uh, station that the train could go to w was allowed to get, go as far as. In one area, it said it could terminate there. In another area, it said it couldn't. So the controller used GeForce, used the acronym, applied it and allowed the train to go to a slightly further station where there was more facilities. So that was a really good use of the tool where there was a little bit of contradiction, but just sitting there and waiting wouldn't have been good for anyone. A couple of other occasions where we've used it, we had a, a scenario where a driver was routed onto a route that they didn't sign in error by the signaller. When they were actually routed onto that route, they were told by the signaller, you're going to need to take this route because uh, we've got lots of trains behind you. So we used GeForce there for that to happen. Obviously, that goes against the sort of procedure and standard that drivers go over routes that they only know but we put some mitigations in place to enable that that move to be carried out safely allow the other trains to be cleared and then the train to return back onto the route that the driver signed and there were a number of mitigations placed around that as well so i think the key thing is that where we find that there are obscure unusual scenarios and and we have to recognize that the world's changing and that we're coming out of the pandemic, that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful situations that present themselves. And GeForce gives that empowerment to the teams making those decisions that they have some backup and some reasoning behind making those decisions. Thank you, Patrick. That seems to me to cover quite a number of scenarios, and there are probably more that nobody's yet encountered. So my final question after who, when and how has to be why. Why does the railway need the GeForce tool and what benefits will it bring? Like I said before, there's two benefits for me. The first one is that as an industry, we've often, sometimes we've shied away from making decisions, partly because we fear repercussions or we fear we're so heavily driven by the rule book that we fear that if we make the wrong decision, that somebody's going to come after us and we're going to get in trouble. And it's really important that it's recognized that if we don't make a decision or we delay things further, that can make things worse. So I think it's really key for the industry to have this tool that we're able to give a little bit more empowerment to our, our frontline teams who are making decisions in the heat of the moment, often with very little information. They've just got a little bit of a, a procedure to follow to give themselves that backup. And also when they reflect and look back and we, we do that together, we can look back and see um, how things went and how things panned out. And I also think, as I said before, you know, we're coming out of a pandemic now, aren't we? And 
you know, there are so many scenarios presenting themselves that we might not have foreseen. And we can't write a rule for every single scenario. We can't update every procedure every five minutes off the back of every incident. So this just gives a little bit of, again, empowerment, a little bit of reasoning and assistance to people who are taking those decisions. And ultimately, as well, make things you know better for our customers. So we're actually moving with the times of it and we're doing things still, you know, making safety the absolute number one priority, but considering the safety of, of everything, considering the risk of doing nothing, considering the risk of delaying decision making and taking it all into account, but putting that all into one sort of big box. It's just a really useful little tool that we're able to use. Thank you, Patrick, for taking the time to enlighten me and others all about the GeForce tool. I look forward to experiencing fewer and shorter delays when I travel by train in future. Although, of course, if it works as smoothly as we hope, I shouldn't actually notice that. To our listeners, thank you for taking the time to stay with us this far. I hope it's given you food for thought about how the GeForce tool might help you reduce delays, improve performance, and deliver a better customer experience. There are links to more information about the GeForce tool, including training, in the blog for this episode on the RSSB website. You'll find the blog's link under the What We Do tab at the top of the homepage. As ever, if you have questions or comments about this or any other of our podcast episodes, please email me at podcasts at rssb.co.uk. Again, thank you for listening. And until the next time, goodbye and stay safe. Mm-hmm.